Can I have your attention? So this is week seven. Week seven. This is week ten, and uh, we're finishing appliances and lights. So these are very important if you are going to be part of the construction of a house, and you have to get involved with designing the heating and cooling, and uh, in parallel with people who are doing the other the other stuff. So you can also consider: is this going to be a room with a lot of lights in it? Is this going to be a room with a lot of appliances in it? So you can compensate for that. And for lighting and appliances heat. Is this considered in heating load calculation or cooling load calculation? Cooling. Cooling. Because it's going to work against you in the cooling. It will help you in the heating, but you should not account or depend on it to be on. So let's say this room is uh, <coughs> now it's very warm because we have 32, 33 people in it emitting heat. But should we design for this room when it's full or when it's empty? When it's when, when nobody knows, when it's empty. That's why it comes to cool, uh, to heating. For cooling, no, we're gonna design for it when it's cold, when it's full. Otherwise, the AC is not going to keep up, and people will be uncomfortable. Uh, have you ever been into a big hall or a big conference room and suddenly it's so hot and everybody's uncomfortable because the AC cannot keep up? So, for cooling, you design when the equipment are on, equipment are on, and people are there. For heating, if the people were there, if the equipment are on, that's good, but I'm not going to count on that. Uh, so the last thing in this uh, chapter is uh, appliances. And we said also, all these things will help you save energy. High demand appliances, the refrigerator, we talked about that a lot. And uh, again, if you want to upgrade, that's always a good idea. If you can get the rebates, it's a good idea. If you notice the new fridges now, the best design uh, that they can come up with is, uh, I think it's very common now, where you have two doors and a chest freezer. So the chest is better because uh, you open it up, it's in the bottom. So the cool air will stay in there and you don't lose a lot of it. The top freezer is uh, the problem when you open it, all the air will fall off. So you have to always be cool. So is so that better than the side by side of freezer? Is that yeah. 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 The, the best design so far is like the bottom. Chest. Oh, yeah. Okay. The bottom freezer that's yeah. a drawer. You open it up and you put it back. The least opening and closing is better. Yeah. And uh, again, one of the things that people do all the time is they open the fridge and they stare at it for 10, 15 minutes, thinking, should I have a piece of pie or should I eat the turkey sandwich? And, and by that time, the whole fridge is gone. And now, I don't know if it's, I've seen it in some TV shows where they have a fr uh, fridge with a camera on it. Yeah, they have it at Home Depot. Really? Oh, yeah. It's out already? Yeah. So you don't have to open the door, you can look inside the, the fridge. Uh, what? So if you don't open the fridge and keep looking and thinking. And uh, yeah. So the, by the time you open the, the fridge, all the cold air is down. I was uh, living in a house once in the living room, and I felt, <coughs> I was sitting on a chair, I felt this cold air coming into my feet, and I, I was wondering what, what happened, and somebody opened the fridge in the kitchen. So all the cold air just fell off. If you have a film camera, you can see this flood coming down of uh, cold air. That's why also in supermarkets, the supermarket it comes off. Falling off. So that's why in, uh, in supermarkets, usually they do a lot of chest freezers. Sometimes they have the, the one with the glass, so you can look before you open the door, but you still have uh, issues with that. So refrigerator, washers, they consume a lot of energy, especially if they have the heated coil or, or they use hot water. And again, usually you only need hot water with five fluid. And if you use the right amount of bleach or the right kind of bleach, you do not need as much heat. But uh, washers do consume a lot of uh, energy because they have motors in them, and depending on the cycle, you can uh, consume more energy. Drying, again, is another issue, issue because uh, there's a motor and there's also a heating coil. Uh, Gas dryers are not recommended because they, it's not worth it when compared to safety and the inspection. And also because the dryers, they do shake a lot, they have a lot of vibration. This vibration can eventually transfer to the pipes and the paste that is put around the pipe joints, it don't deteriorate and fall apart. 
and eventually you will have some leak. Gas leaks are fatal, so people thought, okay, what are you gonna see? Find a dryer, we might as well just use, use uh, uh, electrical. Uh, line drying is not very practical in New England. I tried that, it doesn't work. Oh, but my grandma did it. Does it dead of winter and they're frozen? frozen. When, when she was alive. And I, said, I told her they're frozen. She said, give it a, give, wait till tomorrow. And I came by the next day, they were all dry. Huh. And it was freezing outside, yeah. <laughs> you know why? Uh, uh, AC refrigeration uh, no, physics? Because, <laughs> because uh, the, the winter usually has dry air, so it's about a little bit of humidity, eventually it will dry out. And if, even if you put it actually inside your house, it's gonna humidify. But uh, if you can do the line drying, it's good for you, but it's very time consuming, and it's imp impractical. And uh, especially, especially in this area. And some other areas you can put outside for a couple of hours and it's done, in Mexico. So as you mentioned, the prices share the power consumption. These are 80 to 90 percent that has higher power consumption. A dishwasher, if you think of a dishwasher, 80 to 90 percent of the power goes to water here. That's why if you buy a new, new uh, washer, they're usually quieter, they lose a lot of power, and also they have their own heating coil, so you can choose an option of having hot heat or no Heat. Uh, new models are more efficient and quieter. I used to have a dishwasher that's 20 years old. It sounds like, I don't know, like a storm, like a storm going into the house, so I, I have to yeah. turn it on and leave. The new ones you can't even hear. Uh, technology has advanced. Again, all ties to new kind of motors where you can pump things quietly and have sprays from sideways. So they do have new, new technologies now that will be efficient. I will do things faster. Also, also use some full loads as another advice. Maybe don't just put two cups and turn it on. But it's also about frequency. Remember when we did the example of uh, the microwave and the oven, and we said it's all about frequency. How often do you use them, and how often do you lose them on? And we also talked about even if you use LEDs, but you have twenty of them, that defies the purpose. Uh, heat dry option. That's again, it's another twenty minutes of the heating coil on. So if you can disable that if you don't need it, that's a good idea. And uh, the heat dry is actually very good because one of the main purposes of uh, using the washer, the dishwasher, is uh, sterilization. It does sterile your, your, your pots and your dishes, so that's a good idea. So you, you want the heat dry or steam dry. And if you were to use one, a new one, pick one that does not need a hot water supply. Hot water supply will cost you a lot of money and energy because you're going to pump hot water from the hot water tank all the way to the washer. The new ones, I think they all have their own water heater, which is on-demand water heater. Energy Star products. Load the washer, laundry machine. Newer models are more efficient by a factor of five. That's huge. That is huge. The old ones, they're very liable, but they use a lot of energy, and it has to do with the amount of horsepower the motor has, and how big the drum and the movement. If you think about washing clothes, it's not about like moving the viciously the clothes around. It's about how the water moves around the, the, the clothes. And uh, again, people are still trying to come up with newer and newer models that will be more efficient, and does the job with this moving water around to wash the clothes. So the new ones are very, very efficient, even though for the longest time people did not like them, but before they don't clean the clothes as, as good as the other ones, etc. but they do, it's just they have different different uh, uh, methodology. For the longest time, I remember one of my daughters, she was like, oh, I like the big one with the big rod in the middle and I can feel the storm water going around. It's, it's not about that. And actually, the, the more the more you, you put, the more energy you put into like, turning the clothes, the more you're going to wear them out faster. Mm -hmm. So basically, your dryer is a machine that will turn your clothes into lint. Every time you clean that lint, uh, or a filter, that's a part of your t-shirt coming out. So every time you, you do that, it's going to clean up your lint. It is uh, so taking feed, part of it. It's going to feed the shirt, right? Huh? You're saying it's going to feed the shirt. It's going to get like thinner and thinner and thinner until it becomes see-through eventually. That's why in some, uh, some 
uh, expensive clothing they tell you dry clean only or put in gym to cycle because the fabric is not used very strongly so eventually it will it will deteriorate and grow bad uh, so the weight of the clothes some of the new machines actually they weigh the clothes before they put in water that will save you water and that will save you energy so you see that you turn it on it will take two turns and in that it keeps weighing how much clothes is in there and by that way, they will put, if your machine will decide how much water is needed. So it's a really good way to do it. Also, there's optimized water recycling. And also there are more options when you have extra rinse, less rinse, do you need that, do you not need that? So it goes by the rinse. Uh, here's another information. Horizontal, which is the front one, they are better than vertical machines by 50 to 70%. That's why when you go to most commercial laundromat, they have the front loading. Why is that? Why? Less water. Less water. Why? Uh, because it, it goes horizontally, and also it uses less energy to turn the clothes on because you'll just turn it up and the clothes will fall. So less water needed. You don't have to cover the clothes with water. It goes faster. So it's more efficient. So if you were again to buy a washer, maybe you choose one of those uh, horizontal loading ones. Does anybody use those uh, combination of uh, washer and dryer at the same time, like the same machine? That's a bad idea. Bad idea, huh? That's terrible. Do you have one? No, never. When you first wash and then it's gonna turn into a dryer? Yeah. Would it take long to like empty out all the water that's in there? But it's gonna be the same thing, you're gonna take it Instead of taking physical to the dryer, it just, just stays there and oh, comes yeah. out dry. See? I've seen that, but I, I didn't understand how it's going to function. It was kind of scary. So. If one breaks, you have to buy another. Besides, besides the break, <laughs> does, it even, like, does it even work? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it, it probably does work. So, yeah. huh? I hope so, because my wife's already planning on spending her taxes on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're expensive. But uh, I, I guess the, good, the idea is like, you put the clothes on and you don't worry about them. You come there completely dry. Does it fold it? <laughs> That'll be the next thing. <laughs> okay. Energy factor. That is something you'll see on the label. It's called the energy factor. And there's something called the modified energy factor. The modified energy factor includes how long will it take to dry the clothes. Okay, what, how did they come up with this number? What's, what's going on? The idea is, if I reduce the energy in the washer during the rinse cycle, not the rinse cycle, the, the spin cycle, I can I can fudge out the energy factor. So a lot of companies were doing a less energy factor and they cut down on the spin cycle, which uh, consumes a lot of energy. But it will take you more time to dry it and it will equal out. So they redid the math and they have something called the modified energy factor, which means how long will it take for this load mm -hmm. to dry up? Because of course, if you put really damp clothes in the dryer, <laughs> they will take longer than the oily rinse one. Questions? Any choices? Clothes drying, consider line drying for some of the clothes if you can. I mean, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, it saves energy and also it saves clothes because again, you're wearing out your clothes as often as you wash them. For those who buy very expensive denim and stuff, it's better off doing the drying. Also, the dryer shrinks, shrink the clothes, right? Mm -hmm. But most, most of actually clothes are pretty shrunk. But again, it's a good idea to try to, if you want, if you have a piece of clothes that you really like, you should try to line dry it to give it more mileage. Uh, gas dryer, we said there, uh, they were very common, not anymore. They cost around like 30 to 50 cents per load. And somebody did the math, and that's going to be the same thing for kilowatt hour if we do it efficiently. So most people switch from gas to electricity. Uh, the new ones have humidity sensor, so you do not turn it on more than you're supposed to. That's uh, really one of the best options you can get there in a dryer, where you put less dry, more dryness, and just put in time. So you might put like an hour and a half, and the clothes are already dry. 45 minutes. You cannot have more dry. Once it's dry, it's dry. So you're just toughening your clothes and getting more lint out of them. 
Cleaning the filter is another idea. Uh, it's really important to listen to time where you need, <clears throat> that you need to, to dry the clothes. And uh, most of the time it doesn't happen. You go take the filter and it's completely full. <coughs> that's one of the, that's, that's one of the, one of the innovations that they can do. That dry with no, no lens filter. Why do we need the lens filter? Oh, the lens filter just goes through the air that's, go, that's being recycled, not going outside. That's why. Oh. You know what else would be, be cool? That you can install some kind of heat exchanger for the hot air coming out of the dryer and use that inside the house. Water trap. Yeah. Not the water trap, but heat trap. Heat trap. Yeah, you have to trap the lint. Yeah. You can pay for it, might as well get the heat. Yeah, you can send a, a lint trap. Yeah, that would be a great way yeah. to do it. Save money. Right. Refrigerators and freezers, they ignite fifty percent of energy consumption consumption for the entire year because they're always on. They run all year round. The most efficient ones use less than five hundred kilowatt hour per year, which is around seventy five dollars. That's the most efficient ones. So still, that really isn't that bad at all. The average uh, consumption on refrigerators are around like five to seven hundred dollars a year, which is pretty intense. So, so you can cut your cost by ten times. Uh, you can do a simple math and go check your freezer, uh, your fridge, to see how much power consumption is. Yeah. Uh, and especially when they get old, the seal around the door gets old and starts leaking. And the compressor is always running. If the compressor is always running, that means that something's wrong with the seal. So it's a good investment again to change into a new one. And they have rebates for those as well. Questions about fridges and freezers? Tips for refrigerators? Keep freezers as full as possible. Why? Why? There's no need to freeze empty space. That's one thing, and what else? Thermal mass. Thermal mass, thank you. Excellent. Because frozen stuff will take longer to hold their uh, temperature. I mean, they're frozen, so they sit there, so everything's really going to hold temperature. It's, it's just air. And uh, so if it's full, that's good. If not, I don't know. There is no option to just set it off. It's gonna be on. Uh, defrost, I think the new ones are how to defrost and how do they do? How do they do that? If you, for some of the freezers, once you close them, you can hear a sensor that comes and sucks the air in. So the, the frost is basically humidity accumulating in the walls of your freezer. So when it defrosts, the conduction will change, and ice is a good insulator, right? That's why uh, the Eskimos build igloos. What is the water? Huh? It keeps ejected. Where? Outside, in the kitchen. So it's up there and change the air out. Limit the opening time, that's really key point. Especially if there's a lot of people in the house. Like if it's 97 people, anybody gonna stand the freezer out of the picture for 15 minutes? That's using a lot of energy. Clean the coils once a year, that depends on the type of the freezer or the fridge. It's not very common, but the old ones was a good practice to clean the coils. Automatic defrost mode is a waste energy uh, because it will use a heater and the heater will uh, get turned on when the frost accumulates. I don't think they have those anymore, but if you have a automatic defrost model, don't use that. I, I don't think they have those anymore, the defrost. It does not even accumulate frost in it. It just goes out with the humidity. Side by side, freeze, uh, refrigerator and freezer waste more energy. We talked about that side by side. The layout is different. And uh, uh, if you look at old designs, usually the compressor is in the bottom, freezer is the top, and the fridge is the bottom. So the cold air goes to the freezer first, then recycles back to the refrigerator. So to put, to reverse things around, to put the fridge out, the top and the freezer in the, in the bottom, it's a little bit complicated, but the idea that it will save energy in the long term 
by keeping the cold air in the freezer. What did that make the freezer not that cold? No, it is cold because it's very close to the compressor. It's a good idea. But you need to pump air now. Instead of having it as natural convection, you're going to have it as forced convection out of pan. It goes and circulates the air through that. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. So it is possible to problem if the fan freezes. That, that, if the fan freezes doesn't work, then the fridge is going to go. Yeah. You're not going to have that temperature yeah. in the freezer. Then you have to unplug and unplug the fridge to get that fan. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Uh, it does. It does happen a lot, and uh, the new fridge is actually they have uh, temperature monitor, so you can make sure that it's the right temperature. In the in the past, it was only a number, number eight, number seven. Now they actually have a temperature sensor that tells you what is the temperature, and it's also a good idea to have your own thermometer there in case that is faulty. Make sure the temperature is is all right, and uh, also for food, you don't want food to spoil. So the freezer you want around like twelve degrees. Fahrenheit, so it will be cold. The fridge is around between 30 and 40. We can have the numbers here somewhere. Uh, so it's sometimes it's really good to have two small refrigerators and a big one. One for the daily use and one for the deep freeze. And not a lot of people do that. They have one in the garage for deep freeze. Yeah. So you don't open and close as much. And so on. Oh, all right, here you go. Yeah, all the more uh, models, more than 10 years, they use around 1,000 to 2,000 kilowatt hour per year. So imagine if you have 2,000 kilowatt hour for this uh, fridge. That's a lot of consumption. Yeah, so fridge are between 0 and 5 Fahrenheit. Fridge between 36 and 34. You want to go below 36, otherwise you'll freeze the food. And a lot of food, when, once they are frozen, they lose texture, like especially fresh vegetables. <coughs> Last but not least, pools and spas, if you have them, they consume a lot of energy, but again, they don't use, they're not use very long, and depending on how much water circulation you have, but they do take a lot of hot water demand, and water takes a long time to heat up. Uh, pool is really 78, that's the sweet spot, if anybody does a lot of swimming, most pools are kept at 78, 77, any less than that, it will be very cold to swim, more than that, it gets rid of energy. Uh, circulation costs a lot of energy because you're going to have the pump running the whole time. So that is something to consider. Next semester, we'll, we'll talk about heating loads for uh, pools and spots. And it's a big business. Okay, it's a big business even in the summertime to calculate what is the energy and circulation for the water and also the filtration. So is it good like with the first year for like eight hours a day? Yeah, it makes a difference what kind of pump you use, and always the filtration, and the better filtration system you have, the more the less water circulation you will need. Half tub you usually keep at 108, uh, 102, sometimes 105, 108. I've seen 110, a little bit too hot. But uh, imagine how much energy is put into that water to keep it at that temperature the whole time, especially if it's outdoors, because you're constantly losing temperature. Uh, solar, full heating. That's in chapter nine, how to use solar pool heating. Uh, it's very interesting, especially during the summertime. If the water, again, the water takes a long time to, to heat. So even though it's summertime and it's hot outside, the water might be still cool. So there are ideas to do solar water heating. We have a, a water circulated through a black panel, dark panel, and it will go and heat up and go back into the, the pool. Some of them are passive, where they work by natural convection, and some of them are active. That one has pumps. Um, yeah. Do you know how it's like the indoor pool, like the room is usually like longer? Yeah, because of how. Yeah. Oh, it's because of the pool? Yeah, the pool actually is, the water is losing heat to the room. So most indoor pools heat the room as well. So you're losing heat to the room as well. So you need to insert the room as you heat the pool. That's why you also need pool covers that will eliminate the evaporation and also keep the heat inside the pool. Okay. So pump maintenance and energy consumptions, all pumps consume a lot of energy. New pumps are quieter <laughs> and they have less energy. Uh, time related, how, as you said, like eight hours a day, that's a lot of consumption for a pump. 
and elbows. We will talk about elbows when we circulate water through the house to heat the house because the more elbows you have, the more distance you have, the more resistance and the more pumping power you'll need. Same thing with, yeah. Well, pools really aren't great for HVAC, right? Huh? Pools? Yeah. Aren't, they use more energy than what you Yeah, of course, it's not good, but people want them. Yeah, people want them, and uh, if they have the money, why not, you know, it's really better. This is also heat generated by people. So again, we talked about the room being empty and cold. So we all now giving off sensible heat and letting heat through all evaporating sweat and, and liquid <coughs> in the high bed because the room is dry. And we all giving off heat. And I think there's a, there's a question in the homework, the new homework about this. So it's how much heat do we give, sensible heat? 250 BTU on 75 watt, which is a light bulb. That's sensible heat. Latent heat about 55. Well, that's from evaporating vapor. And again, in a gym, that's around 210. Or in the hallway over there, when you play ping pong, <laughs> that's around 210, maybe 500 BTUs. And again, you're sweating more, you're giving more sensible heat. <coughs> so use that chart for your uh, cooling load or for the homework. Any questions? If not, we'll do the quiz.